Welcome everybody to the Denver Broncos franchise as the roof is open here in Houston, Texas and we have our week 8 matchup between the 2-4 and four Broncos and the 2-4 and four Texans. Neither team has liked the way they've started this season and this game offers a chance to perhaps turn one of these seasons around. The Broncos are coming off back-to-back -back losses and last episode they lost Donovan Jennings, rookie running back to a broken collarbone. With that injury, we are not looking to trade Royce Freeman. But I was still looking at veterans we could make deals for if this season's not going to be a great one for us. And I decided that trading Chris Harris would be the best thing for this team, given that our secondary and defense has not been great this year. So by trading Chris Harris for a second round pick, we get the chance to play some younger players and hopefully start to find some players to build around there in the secondary. We do sign Andrew Ramsey off of the Bills practice squad. And you're going to see Damian Charles and Eric McKinney, of course. But we're also going to see Xavier Watts, the rookie safety, get a chance to play some corner. He has the size, speed, and coverability, I believe, to play either safety or corner. And that means Eric McKinney now is going to play the slot where previously Chris Harris was playing. On top of that, we have the breakout chance today for Centarius Phillips, who was the primary receiver in the last loss we had. But I think he's played pretty well this year, and here's a chance for him to get that elusive superstar development. We're all teed up and ready to go, everybody. Week 8, a big one for these two 2-4 two and four teams as we get underway. And the Texans will start things at their 25 with quarterback Deshaun Watson, who has eight touchdowns on the year, 1,300 yards. And the Texans will start their day with three tight ends and get it going with play action. It is a short throw and a flag is down. And this will be against Houston for an eligible man downfield. Facing third down, Texans empty. Watson on target for Northrop, who makes the catch, and he has the first down. Ball at the Houston 40. Again throwing short, Northrop is hit on the play. That's Damian Charles, and Northrop is shaken up after the play. Texans go to the bunch again. It's third down protected Watson complete. This is DeAndre Hopkins for the first down Watson starting four of four today now they run D'Angelo Henderson breaks a tackle but still can't get out of the backfield They lost a one Lamar Miller checks into the backfield Third down pressure on Watson gets it away and caught downfield by Will Fuller Will Parks just a step too late getting over to defend. It's a 34-yard connection. And here are the Texans now just outside the red zone. Up top, Watson! And off the hands of Xavier Watts! Nearly the rookie's first interception. Two deep safeties on this third down. This is complete to Eric Ebron. Shy of the sticks, though. And the Texans will have to bring out the field goal team. 3-0 Houston, and here are the Denver Broncos now without Donovan Jennings, and we'll see what their plan is. They start today empty, and it's a screen. Deion Price gets a couple blocks, shakes a tackle, and he picks up the first down on a gain of 12. Opening things up on the first few plays, starting tailback, Marion Peppers running inside, and this is a gain of 5. We should see Royce Freeman as well at some point, but Pepper's getting the start and pressure on Taquan Layton here on third down. It's J.J. Watt. Houston had that good opening possession and they don't waste too much time in getting it back. Here's Lamar Miller falling ahead, stopped by Eric McKinney. I'm very interested in how McKinney adapts to playing inside. I think his athleticism fits there well. And on third down, again, Eric Ebron. That'll move the chains. Daryl Henderson checks in. Play fake on first down. Watson connects again. This is Nelson Aguilar inside of Denver territory. Houston is pretty deep at receiver, so an immediate challenge for this new look secondary as Vaughn Miller and Boogie Turner wrap up Lamar Miller. 
We forced plenty of third downs here to start. Got to make a play now. Third and nine. Caught by Hopkins and wrecked up by Eric McKinney. And it looks like they will attempt the 55-yard field goal. And the kicker is Clifton Wedstrom from right hash. It's hooking and no good. Wide to the left. And Denver will get some good field position. What can they do with it? Three wide in the game, and a delay, cutting left and weaving back to the inside, Marion Peppers with a great run inside the Houston 40. Good start to this drive, now to the air, Leighton gets it away just in time for Centarius Phillips, this picks up close to 10 more. John Anderson in, leading outside for Peppers as he takes it down to the 24. The runs haven't been too bad, and now they bring in Royce Freeman, and he'll find some daylight inside and take it to the 16. Freeman's had some very good moments in this series, and he'll get a chance to show he can still give us more of them. Peppers checks back in. Here's third down and 11. Taking off. Here goes Leighton inside the 10. Out of bounds at the marker, and he's got it. First down, Denver. Now can they finish? They have not been a great red zone team this season, so this is no gimme. First and goal from the three. Leighton to the end zone! No! Bo Lee was out of bounds! Let's try again. Inside. Peppers! Denied. DJ Reader. Third down and goal. Shotgun. Two wide, two tight end. Leighton fakes. Fires! Incomplete! Maybe the defender got a hand on it, but they're going to go for it one more time. They're one yard out. Leighton under center. Deep back Freeman. He gets it and plunges in. Touchdown, Denver. They do not waste their chance settling for three. Six on the board and Denver takes the lead. Very good possession there, and now Houston takes over down four. Watson off the play action, a big pickup for Will Fuller, 27 yards. 10 of 11 for Deshaun Watson, over 120 passing. Secondary still having their struggles as Aguilar brings this one in near the sideline for a gain of seven. Deep back is D'Angelo Henderson as the pass goes over the head of McKinney. And Fuller has another first down. Not enough pressure. Not enough contest downfield either. Here's Ebron. A quick move against Baxter. And he appears to have another first down. Marching down the field and spreading out this defense. Finally got some pressure. It doesn't matter. Hopkins takes it inside the 10. Gain of 15. Two tight ends and another pass. Ebron to the five and stopped at the three. Third down again. Three's a lot better than six. Third and goal. Watson wide open. Way too easy. Touchdown, Houston. This secondary looks as bad as they have all season. 10 to 7, Houston takes over. 5.44 to go in the first half as Phillips makes the catch, takes the contact. Leighton's just thrown seven passes here in the first half. He gives this one to Peppers and he picks up the first down. Denver running the ball a bit more than they are passing. First and 10 underneath for Peppers. Not a bad call there on first down. They should hit those checkdowns a bit more frequently. Here's the keeper now, Leighton pulls it back. He's across the 50 and slides down safely. They're finding some rhythm here, I like it. Three minutes on the clock now, and the quick hitter to Curtis Samuel as he picks up another first down. Not always flashy, but it's been effective. Another keeper, ball comes out and this is big trouble. Taken inside the 20. Houston scores again on the Taquan Leighton fumble. Ball security has been a big issue. We've seen a lot of these fumbles. This is close though. Right knee. It is not down as the ball is coming out. And the Texans have turned this into a two score lead by taking advantage of this team's weaknesses. 
Down 10, though. Here comes take one late and right back with the big throw. That was risky, and it pays off. Dion Price for 32. Can they get these points back now before halftime? Peppers, not much here on his eighth carry. Empty and Peppers out to the slot. Third down, and Phillips is there again over the middle with a catch. Timeout. They still have two left in 52 seconds. Layton underneath again. Phillips with running room. There's a first down that stops the clock. Now over 100 yards passing, 19 yards to go. Pressure and Layton's dropped. He's not getting a lot of extra time in the pocket. The ball has to come out quick, especially against this front. It's third down. Layton up the middle, escapes to the 20 and slides. But it looks like they'll have to settle for a field goal. It's better than nothing, I guess. 17-7. And Brandon McManus hits the three. And we are back to a touchdown game. Still, we're seeing this defense have their struggles. But I'm happy to see the offense put together a couple drives here without Donovan Jennings. We need a few more. At 2-4, things aren't looking good for either one of these teams. Teams that begin 2-4 only have a 9% chance of making the postseason, but for the winner, they'll boost their chances to 19%. It's a way to get things back on the right track, and Denver is trying to do that with a pretty balanced approach today. I think they've done a pretty good job running. Here's Anderson now, the surprise fullback dive, and that's a six-yard pickup. I like what we've seen from Peppers. Here he is again. Picks up the first and hits the sideline with another first down pickup. That's 54 yards for Marion. Now heading to the air on second down with time caught by Phillips for a gain of about six. They're having some trouble getting those big plays, so these third and threes are pretty important. And there's the connection, Dion Price at the 32. Layton's found his comfort zone in this game, I think. He's completed 75%. Play fake, rolling away from pressure, and here's Fant. Not much for him. Deion Price isolated as the Broncos go bunch. On third and four. Cut by Curtis Samuel inside the 10. Big time throw and catch to make it goal to go. Two tight ends now for Denver. And in the end zone is Jake Butt. Touchdown, Denver. Great response by Taquan Layton and the offense after falling down 10. We're now tied. Essentially a brand new game. And now we want to see some strides from this defense. And a face mask to start this drive isn't what I counted on. Here's Lamar Miller on the carry. He gets a few. Big situation again. Third and six. Empty for Watson. He completes it to Miller and well shy of the sticks. The defense does their job, even if it's not in impressive fashion. 17 all, and this offense has been in good form on their last few drives, but loses one on the first play here with Peppers. Back at the five here, gotta be careful. Layton steps up, and he's wrapped up on the play, and thankfully, he barely got out of the end zone. But it's third down from the one. Denver brings in three tight ends. Leighton to throw, rolling outside, he has all kinds of room! First down and a whole lot more as Taquan Leighton gets out of bounds at the 32. This drive is saved. I love the way Leighton's been playing today. Now the stretch, Freeman with a cut and downhill he gets to the 41. We've been so much better running on first down. Here's a cut again, Freeman drives ahead. I think he's done a pretty good job today showing that he didn't need to be traded. First and 10 now, and this one gets away from Leighton as Phillips was wide open. We don't see too many misses like that, but that brings up a second and 10. Leighton from the pocket, here's Jake Butt, a block thrown, and he'll get some extra yards after the catch, and another first down. Here are the Broncos again in scoring range. First and 10, sweeping to the right, and there's nothing there but J.J. Watt. 
Peppers has lost yardage on his last couple of carries, so second and 13. Off the mark again from Leighton, he missed the check down. And it's third and long. Hakeem Butler checks into the game, Denver needs the 26. And Leighton's going deep to the end zone, and Price makes the catch! Touchdown Broncos, what a play! Leighton goes for it all with his one-on-one -on -one matchup. And Dion Price makes one of the best plays of his young career. 24-17. Can the defense hold? Watson knocked away! Xavier Watts! I love that he's getting this playing time here, even if corner isn't his long-term position. Third and seven. Check down Miller, and that is going nowhere. Great three and out for us by the defense. Right here is about as good as this team has looked in any game this year, not against Kansas City. And they needed this. Good run for Royce Freeman. Trying to build upon this lead now. Freeman again carries and gets a couple more. He's at eight carries now. Third down of the secondary playing way off. Leighton beats the pressure. Here's Jake Butt with more running room as he continues a big day receiving. Back into Houston territory, new set of downs. Leighton spins left and he meets the pressure forced by DJ Reader. And that's a big loss of seven. A long way to go on this third down, third and 18. There's pressure, Leighton gets it away and overthrew Dion Price who almost had another big catch. Now it's a big stop forced by Houston, and they take over down seven. Plenty of time from the 20. Now a deep shot from Watson, knocked away by Will Parks, who was step for step with Will Fuller. The defense is starting to make some plays. On second down, a quick check down, and Lamar Miller picks up eight. What's the call on third and short? The back is Henderson. He won't get it as Fuller makes the catch. First down, Houston. Out to their own 38-yard line. Setting up the screen for Lamar Miller as he loses some ground and can't recover as he's dropped by Boogie Turner. Not often you lose nine yards on a screen, but that's just what happened. Here's a catch that will get the lost yardage back and make it a more manageable third down for Houston. They need their own 48 to keep this going. Pressure picked up and Watson hits Fuller right at the sticks. But the real play here I think was Lamar Miller picking up Eric McKinney. New set of downs for Houston and from the empty set. Watson open again, Aguilar inside the 35. Watson now up to 223 passing as Houston enters field goal range. First and 10, a short one. Good move by Miller who picks up the first. It's now a red zone trip. Houston trying to tie this up. Fuller in motion and they give it to Henderson who makes a nice move and picks up a few. Denver keeps both safeties back here on second down. And the quick pass hauled in. Hopkins inside the 10. And it's goal to go. Can Houston tie it up? 7.30 left on the clock. Up the middle. Diving in is D'Angelo Henderson. And the Houston Texans have their answer. We're tied at 24. Pretty good game we've had here today between these two desperate two and four teams. Still seven minutes left. Here's Marion Peppers with a very productive catch of 13. Leighton trying to bring the offense down the field again. First and 10 off the mark and picked off. Houston has it and still going inside the 35. Quinton Dunbar on the pick. Leighton throws it downfield here. Looks like miscommunication. And that is a huge mistake that puts Houston immediately in scoring range. Good play here by Von Miller. Hopefully we can just force a quick field goal try. Or maybe get a sack here on third down. No extra pressure. And Watson delivers to Will Fuller. He's been the primary receiver and we've had all kinds of trouble guarding him. Pressure now on first down. That's a fumble. 
but the Texans are going to keep it. That was Christian Covington on the pressure. Clock down to three and a half to go. It's a run on third down, and there's some room, but not enough for Henderson, who's thrown down by Miles Jack. For the lead, 26-yard try up and through. Houston on top. And Denver now needs to answer with 2.45 left to go. Leighton played well after his first turnover earlier. Now after the interception, rolling out and wide open is Noah Fant. That's the quick start we wanted to see. We can take a field goal here, but want the six. Peppers, not a ton, but he will grind out every inch he can. I think we ran a bit better in the first half. Second down, Leighton. Outside and broken up for Dion Price. Last play before the warning. Spread out the defense. Here's Taquan Leighton. Steps up. Rolling out. He's going to go for it all on this one and overthrew Price. I don't think that was a good attempt, especially now bringing up the fourth down. Do the Broncos have a play? They've got to get seven. Fourth down. Caught by Phillips and he's short of the sticks. He's about a half yard short. Leighton sees the pressure, throws over the middle, but it's guarded perfectly. Denver kept their timeout, so it's not done yet. Got to stop the running game now, and Miller's taken down by McKinney. Tight formation here on second down. The stretch, Henderson, he cuts inside and gets only three, and he's down, meaning Houston has to use an injury timeout. Third and four, Lamar Miller is stuffed, and Denver using two timeouts ensures one more drive. And it's the biggest of this season. The loser will have 3% odds of making the postseason. Here's Phillips, this one does get a first down. Clock down to a minute nine. From the 32, outside the numbers, and off the mark with Curtis Samuel wide open. You can't afford to miss that one, it's third down. Scanning downfield, Leighton taken down back at the 26 by J.J. Watt. And they'll have to use their last timeout and hope for a miracle on 4th and 16. Leighton to the air again, gets time, and Price can't make the catch, it's incomplete! And the Denver Broncos are going to fall the 2-5 on the season. They targeted Price often today, but this is not where he's going to thrive. And the Houston Texans can celebrate. They move to 3-4. and four. They don't have great playoff chances, but they have a shot at turning this season around. Meanwhile, for Denver, at 2-5, and five, this season could already be over. I thought we did some really good things on offense, but the turnovers just hurt so bad. Obviously, any turnover that scores points is not good. On top of that, the interception. Those ones always annoy me because I'm just trying to throw with anticipation there, but if you throw it too early, they don't care that it's a curl route. On the next drive, I wait to play it safe on the curl, and it gets broken up. So the curl route is not my favorite one. The running game was looking awesome in the first half, but it really wasn't successful in the second. Just trying, you know, standard inside zone runs, and we were losing yardage after getting big pickups in the first half. Still, we made some big plays. Dion Price came through with a couple big catches. But of course, he probably didn't need the target there on 4th and 16. Should have gone to Samuel or Phillips. But ultimately, this season started out going the wrong direction. And 7 games in, we're 2-5. and five. It's not what I thought would happen this season. No offense, numbers are way down. I just haven't been able to get him involved very well. And the defense continues to struggle. We're not seeing the pressure like we once did. The coverage hasn't been great. I like that I traded away Chris Harris, especially knowing that we're probably not looking at a playoff season unless we have some massive turnaround. At least we have an extra second round pick. 
Our next game is against the defending Super Bowl champions, the Cardinals, who are 3-3-1. And, and we are already 0-3 against the NFC West. Hopefully we can build upon what we did well on offense today, but we've got to start playing some better defense. And maybe it's time to start playing some other edge rushers. If we're not going to get pressure, we've got to give someone else some chances. And since we're 2-5 and five on the year, maybe it's a good time to begin looking at the draft and the top players in it. Tyson Walker, quarterback from Oklahoma, Jamari Akinjide. There are some fun players at a variety of positions. And I expect with some teams needing quarterback, we could see Tyson Walker go off the board number one overall. I'm not counting on us taking a quarterback. There are a number of defensive players I'm very interested in. And Jaquel Okoji is going to be somebody near the top of our board. He is the top corner in this class. He's a great press man corner. And I'd love to get some players who have good press coverage skills. There's also Shabazz Sherwood, who's more of a zone corner. I'd be happy, I believe, with him as well. We have to address this secondary somehow. This corner class is pretty deep, it looks like. At the top, there are a number of players with different skill sets. So you've got to figure out who fits what you need most. At safety, there are some fantastic players. Jamie Alexander, Jamari Akinjide, Tommy Jordan. I think he could even play cornerback. We remember him from Calvis Spell. He was a great athlete. And I think he could play either spot. But Jamari Akinjide should also go very early as one of the most complete players in this class. If this season doesn't turn around, we'll spend even more time going into this draft class and what we could possibly do in the offseason. But I did not expect us to be 2-5 and five at this point. We'll have the Cardinal game coming your way soon. Thank you for watching. I know it's been a tough season, but we'll see what the future holds. Please leave a like subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.